Let's get started with the human torso models. We're going to start off with the cavities. So, first cavity I want to show you is the orbital cavity associated with the eye. So, orbital cavity is right here. Next, we have the oral cavity. That's your mouth. Next, optic cavity. Ear. Next, buccal cavity. The cheek. Inside the cheek, I should say. Next, we have the dorsal cavity. Dorsal cavity is going to include two cavities. It's going to include your cranial cavity, which is right here. Let me show you better on here. So here's your cranial cavity. The brain is going to be included in the cranial cavity. And then you have your spinal cavity or vertebral cavity which is going to be where your spinal cord is. Now, we have the ventral cavity, which is going to be this whole area right here. So here's your ventral cavity right there. This whole area right here. Remember, the dorsal cavity is going to include everything here. Here's your dorsal cavity. Everything. So here's your vertebral cavity or spinal cavity. And here's your cranial cavity right here where you have the brain. Now, within the ventral cavity, we have the thoracic cavity. Here is your thoracic cavity right here. So with the thoracic cavity you have from your diaphragm, which is this parachute-like muscle, very important in breathing, superiorly. So there is your thoracic cavity and Inferior to your diaphragm, you have your abdominal pelvic cavity. Inferior to your diaphragm, you have your abdominal pelvic cavity. Now, I want to go further into the thoracic cavity and talk about the subcompartments in here. So, we have pleural cavities which are going to include your lungs which include your lungs so pleural cavity so here's your right one and here's your left one right here that's your pleural cavities include your lungs and then we have the mediastinum the mediastinum is going to include this area right here in between your pleural cavities. So that's going to be in between your pleural cavities. And with the mediastinum, that's going to include your pericardial cavity, which is going to be associated with the heart, as well as the vessels coming off of the heart, such as the vena cava, Here's your superior vena cava, your aorta, aortic arch, or aortic arch, and then your pulmonary trunk. So these vessels, these great vessels coming off the heart, vena cava, aorta, and pulmonary trunk are all going to be included within the uh, mediastinum. Also the trachea and esophagus uh, would be included in the mediastinum as well. Now, 
the pericardial cavity is going to be included within the mediastinum. So mediastinum is going to include all this stuff in the middle here, which includes your pericardial cavity, which includes the vessels coming off of the heart, such as vena cava, the aortic arch, and pulmonary trunk, and lymph nodes. Now, this right here is your abdominal pelvic cavity. Now, it's going to be subdivided into, pardon the mess, it's going to be subdivided into the uh, abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity. So the abdominal cavity uh, doesn't really have a um, barrier, but if you look right here, you'll see the iliac crest region of the hip. So this right in here is going to be the pelvic cavity. And let's move on to the neck region of the torso. So I want to start talking about the um, hyoid uh, bone. So here's the hyoid bone right here. And then we have the ligamentum thyrohyroidium medianum, which is right here. And then the ligamentum uh, thyrohyroidium laterally, right here. Right here is your thyroid cartilage, here. And then there's a muscle that we're going to talk about, the cricothyroid muscle, or cricothyroidus muscle, is right here. And then right here is your thyroid gland. Thyroid gland right here. Oftentimes, when you look at the dissections, uh, which we'll look at later in the course, you'll see that the cricothyroidus muscle will be very close proximity to the thyroid gland. Thyroid gland is a bilobe structure, as we see here. We do not see any um, parathyroid glands here. But the parathyroid glands are going to be within the thyroid tissue. Okay, let's move on. We have the trachea right here. So here's your trachea. Hyaline cartilage associated with the trachea. And then we can see that the trachea is going to further go down uh, right here and fork off the bifurcation of trachea and then the primary bronchi right here, these two structures here, and make a Y. Okay. Heck, I've heard. Okay, I'll, I'll repeat that again because uh, I'm going right down the list. So bifurcation of trachea is right here. So here's the trachea again right here. Here's your bifurcation of trachea. And here's your right primary bronchus here, your right primary bronchus, and then your left primary bronchus is right here. Or I should say, right stem bronchus and left stem bronchus. Segmental bronchus is right here. Segmental bronchus is right here. Let's move on to the next thing here. Let's get this structure here. And look at some stuff here with the, um, didn't sound too good. All right, uh, let's look at the sternum bone. So here's your sternum bone right here. 
That's the Ziffort process right there. And then we have the clavicle. So here's your left clavicle right here. Okay. And then we have the pectoralis muscle right here, pectoralis major muscle. Okay. And then we have the mammary gland right here. And then we have the areola right there. Uh, nipple right there. And we have the intercoastal muscles. Important muscles in breathing right here. In between the ribs. Intercoastal muscles. Okay. And let's see, we have the coastal cartilage, which is hyaline cartilage again, uh, which is going to connect to the ribs, as we see here. here here's your ribs. Okay, uh, let's start off with the heart. So here is the heart of the torso model. And I want to show you some structures here. So we have the... Let me put this on here so we can get started. And let me get something else here. I want to get a probe. Might have been easier if I had a probe to begin with. So here we have the heart, and here is the um, left ventricle right here. That's the outside. external anatomy and then right here we have the ascending aorta ascending aorta means going up so here's your ascending aorta let me connect this better I think that's as good as going to get so ascending aorta right there going up okay aortic valve okay let's take this part here. So we have the internal anatomy of the left ventricle and here's your external anatomy of your left ventricle. Here's your right ventricle over here and here's the internal anatomy of the right ventricle. So there's your right ventricle right there and left ventricle. Okay. So Aortic valve is right here. Here's your aorta right there. Or ascending aorta. Okay. We have the aortic arch. We see a little arch right here. You can't see it that well in this model, uh, but there's an arch right there. You can see it on other models. It's going to curve around and we can see the descending or thoracic aorta right here so there's a little so we will see an arch right here we're just going to curve around right through there so ascending aorta the arch and descending aorta okay Let's move on. We have the abdominal aorta right here. Structure right there. See, it, it goes all the way down. So here's your thoracic aorta or descending aorta. It's going to go all the way down through here. Go right down through the diaphragm into the abdominal pelvic cavity. Okay. Now, we have these structures right here. Uh, they look like dog's ears in a way. So we have the right oracle and then your left oracle. So right and left oracle. And then we can see the chambers here. So here's your right atrium and then your left atrium right here. So right and left 
atrium. And then we have the right oracle and left oracle. Okay, let's move on. Uh, we have the mitral or bicuspid valve. So, here's the bicuspid valve right here. Or the mitral valve. Remember that the bicuspid or mitral valve is associated with the left side. It's going to be the AV or atrioventricular valve between the left atrium and in your left ventricle, as we see here. Now, we have the right ventricle again right here. So here's your right ventricle. So there's your right ventricle, and then right here is your uh, right or right atrium, right atrium, excuse me, right atrium, and we can see the truncus pulmonaris, truncus pulmonalis, excuse me, is right, is right here. Truncus pulmonalis is right here. Or I just call it the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary trunk is going to fork into the pulmonary arteries. Pulmonary arteries. So here's your pulmonary arteries here, and here, and here. They're colored blue because of the deoxygenated blood. So pulmonary trunk, and then your pulmonary arteries coming off of the pulmonary trunk. Okay? Uh, we have the pulmonary valve. Pulmonary valve is associated with the pulmonary trunk. Pulmonary valve, if it is a semilunar valve, just like the aortic valve. So the aortic valve is a semilunar valve, and then your pulmonary trunk is a semilunar valve. Now the tricuspid valve right here and your bicuspid valve right here, those are AV valves or atrioventricular valves. And let's look at the superior vena cava. So here's your superior vena cava right here. And here's your inferior vena cava, right here. Or we can look at it on the heart here. So, get this. So superior vena cava right here, and there's your inferior vena cava. Superior, we just connect it here again. So, superior vena cava. And then we see the inferior vena cava right there. Okay. And let's see if there's anything else here. I've already showed you the pulmonary arteries. So here's your pulmonary artery right here. Coming off your pulmonary trunk. Pulmonary artery, pulmonary artery, pulmonary artery. Pulmonary veins are colored red because they're bringing oxygenated blood back to the left side of your heart here into the left atrium. R remember, uh, I want you to know that the pulmonary trunk is coming from your right side of the heart, the deoxygenated side with deoxygenated blood and the left side of your heart is associated with oxygenated blood because you have oxygenated blood coming into the left side of your heart into your left atrium. So pulmonary 
veins right here, red. Pulmonary veins are red. And pulmonary arteries are blue because of deoxygenated blood. Now, that's your only exception. So when you're talking about arteries, arteries are going to be associated with oxygenated blood. Veins are associated with deoxygenated blood, except for the pulmonary arteries and veins. Okay, we have the brachiocephalic trunk or artery, this first branch coming off of your aortic arch right here, as we see here. This first one coming off right here. And then we have the common carotids right here, right there, and right there, right there, and right there. Right and left common carotid arteries. Subclavian arteries. So here's your right one, and here's your left one right here. Okay. Uh, we have your femoral artery. So here's your femoral artery right here. Okay. And then we have the brachiocephalic veins. So we have the superior vena cava right here. And then we can see where you have your left brachiocephalic vein right here. And then here's your right brachiocephalic vein. Right brachiocephalic vein, left brachiocephalic vein. Okay. And then we have the jugular vein right here and right here, blue. Jugular vein is right here and right there. And then we have the femoral vein right next to the artery. So femoral artery, femoral vein. Femoral artery and vein. And we have renal artery and vein. So here's your kidney right here. Kidney. Okay. And right here is your renal artery and renal vein. On this side, we have the renal artery and renal vein. That's it.